What's up guys? Today I am reviewing R.L. Stein's Fear Street Super Thriller books. So these were published in, this one was published in 2014 and 15. And then this one was published in 2015 and 16. And the reason the years are split up like that is because there's actually two books in each of these collections. As you can see, these books are kind of thick. So yeah. So there's uh, some of his newer Fear Street books. I actually read this one a while ago, and this one I actually just finished reading. But I figured I'd just do a quick review on both of them because all the stories are pretty similar, and I don't have a whole lot to say about them, but let's just get started. So this one I read a little while ago, the first story being Party Games. And each uh, story is about 250 pages each, I think. Yeah, about that. So these books are a little over 500 pages each, each story being around 250 pages or so. But anyway, so Party Games, I did not care for at all. <laughs> it starts out okay. The kids um, go to like an overnight party on a secluded island. They have to go there by like a rowboat. And they start dying mysteriously one by one. And it turns into like a Agatha Christie type murder mystery. That's what it reminds me of, honestly, is like an Agatha Christie novel. It almost feels like a ripoff of... And then there were none, a little bit, like, kind of a similar plot. But, so it starts out, like, okay, like, some of the deaths are kind of creepy and creative. But the story really goes downhill. The whole plot twist and reveal towards, like, the third act of the book, or around there, if I remember correctly, is really dumb, unbelievable, just very cheesy. There's a, a lot of dumb plot twists in party games that really ruined it for me because they really didn't make any sense and it just kind of ruined the whole book for me. Party games I did not care for at all. So yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. The second one, Don't Stay Up Late. That one I enjoyed a lot more. So Don't Stay Up Late is also very cheesy. That's one thing I'm going to say about all of these books, honestly, is there's a lot of plot holes in them. They're just... A lot of the characters just make really dumb decisions. And if you're going to read these and you want to enjoy them, you really do have to suspend your disbelief. I will say that. It's worse than Goosebumps books almost. Like, at least those books are geared more towards kids. But with these being young adult books, I would expect them to be a little bit smarter and more well-written. But they're not. <laughs> There's a lot of plot holes in these books, including Don't Stay Up Late. But I did enjoy it more because Don't Stay Up Late is more of a psychological type thriller story. And I really like psychological horror type stuff. I think it's really cool. It's basically about this girl that goes to babysit this kid. And she starts thinking that there's something wrong with them. The parents act really weird about them. And yeah, I don't really want to spoil too much or give anything away. But this one actually had kind of a cool twist to it. I really like the whole psychological aspect of it because um, people start accusing the girl that's babysitting the kid that they might think she's mentally unstable and stuff. And so there's some cool stuff going on in the second book. And still not a great story. Like I said, there's some plot holes, some things that don't make sense. But you kind of have to suspend your disbelief if you want to enjoy these stories. Uh, party games, I think I give probably like one and a half out of five, maybe. And don't stay up late, maybe like a two and a half out of five. So yeah, that's the first one. Let's see, Super Thrillers. This one doesn't have a title, it's just called Super Thriller. So the second one in this series, there's actually three of these books in total. I don't have the third one and I probably won't get it because I didn't enjoy these ones all that much to be honest. But this second one, Super Thriller, is called Secrets. And the two stories in it are called The Lost Girl and can you keep a secret? So what actually want led me to want to read one of the stories in here, The Lost Girl, is I'd seen R.L. Stein talking about that book in an interview, and he said it contained one of the most horrifying, disgusting scenes he's ever written in one of his books in it. I'm like, I gotta read it. <laughs> I have no idea what to expect, but I have to read that if R.L. Stein says it's gross and disgusting and he uh, made the joke and he's like, but I'm very proud of it. I'm like, I got to read that story now. So, and it comes, the scene happens like almost instantly. Like it's in the first portion of the book. I think it's the prologue. 
I don't know if it's called the prologue. I can't remember, but it's like in the first portion of that story. There is, I don't want to spoil it, but it is slightly gruesome and disgusting. And it's kind of cool too. Like I would have never thought of that. I don't think I've ever read a death that happened the way it does in that scene. It's not quite as gruesome or horrific as I was expecting or hoping it to be, but it was definitely pretty weird and gross. So yeah, that was kind of cool. So that was actually what led me to want to get this book was for that one scene. And I seen it just had a couple books in it. So I figured I might as well get this one as well. But anyway, the story as a whole, The Lost Girl, I did not care for it all that much. It was like these other two, extremely cheesy. The characters are really dumb. They make a lot of dumb decisions. And there's just too many plot holes to really enjoy it. Even I was trying to suspend my disbelief a little bit, but it's really hard to, especially with a novel that tries to take itself more seriously, you know, and it's more geared towards older audiences. So I don't know. <laughs> it's like a young adult novel that reads like a Goosebumps book. Almost the writing is just very childish at times. Like, I don't know. I think R.L. Stein just might be getting a little bit old and his quality of young adult thrillers is just not what it used to be. So the lost girl, I just did not care for that one at all. Probably about the same as Party Games. I would rate it the same. The second one, Can You Keep a Secret, was slightly better. Kind of like the first collection. Don't stay up late. I like slightly better. So, Can You Keep a Secret? I actually just finished reading that today. And that one actually has a couple of different plot points going on in it. So, there's one plot point where... And this isn't really much of a spoiler because it's revealed somewhat early on or kind of hinted at. But it's kind of revealed that the protagonist, the main girl, thinks that she's a werewolf. She's having these weird dreams and she wakes up and is like freaking out and she finds like her bed sheets shredded up and stuff. So there's kind of like a supernatural horror aspect to it. She thinks that she's a werewolf. And then the other plot point is that her and her friends go out camping in the woods and they come across a bag of money. Or not a bag, it's like a briefcase. And it's got like $100,000 in it or something. And they, they're they arguing about what to do with this money. They like fight over it. They're talking about it. And they hide it. And a bunch of other crazy stuff happens. I don't want to give too much away in case you decide you want to read it. But I did actually enjoy it a little bit more. Because there's, like I said, those two things going on. The problem with it is, is those uh, two aspects of the story don't really intertwine the best because it starts out focusing on the werewolf aspect a little bit. And then throughout most of the story, <clears throat> it's focusing on the money. The kids are trying to figure out what to do with it. They fight about it. They hide it. They dig it up. They hide it again. And it turns into more of like a crime thriller. The whole werewolf thing is kind of forgotten about a little bit. It comes back a couple times, but it's not... A very prominent part of the story until towards the end then they start to tie it in a little bit together but it doesn't really work all that well but I still did enjoy the story for that aspect of it that it had some more stuff going on and it wasn't super simple and basic like the lost girl or party games was like I did enjoy that I thought it was kind of neat and as I've mentioned in some of my previous videos, uh, probably the Goosebumps videos, I, it was, I think. I really like werewolf type stories. I don't know why. I'm just a sucker for that kind of thing. I just enjoy reading anything about wolves and I don't know. I just like that whole genre, subgenre of horror, I guess you could say. So I did enjoy Can You Keep a Secret a little bit more. The twist ending, very cheesy. The whole story is still cheesy. Like I said, the characters are really dumb. You really have to suspend your disbelief if you want to enjoy these books. But yeah, Can You Keep a Secret is probably like a two or a two and a half out of five stars. But yeah, I don't really have a whole lot else to say about them. I, I can't really give a thorough review on these books because for reasons I've already mentioned, they're not very in-depth stories. They're very simple, cheap, fun. Like these are the equivalent of like fast food, I guess you could say. They're just, you're not going to get a lot out of these stories. 
They're not completely horrible, but they're not good either. Arl Stein has written way, way better young adult thrillers. I would recommend maybe going to check out some of his older Fear Street books. Even I still haven't read a ton of his older Fear Street novels and young adult thrillers, so I want to go back and read some more of those. And I would probably recommend checking out those first. But if you do want to read these, I mean, just don't say I didn't warn you. There's just a lot of plot holes, and it kind of ruins it for me. But, yeah, my two favorites were definitely Can You Keep a Secret and Don't Stay Up Late, which are this is the second story in each book. But I still didn't like them a ton and wouldn't necessarily recommend them to anybody. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. Um, thanks for watching the review, guys. Peace.